Hello everyone, my name is Michael and in today's video I'm going to show you how we can implement pagination using Mongoose and create an API in Node.js and Express.js. So yeah, with that said, let's get into the video. Make sure you first of all create a folder where your project will be or you can clone my code from GitHub. I'll put my GitHub repository down in the description. But if you want to start from scratch, just create a new folder and follow along. So first of all, we will do npm init-y so we can create a package.json. There we go. And next I'll do code dot to open the folder in Visual Studio Code. Next, we will create an index.js where we will have our code. And then I also need to install. So we'll do npm my mongoose and then express the js and then we will do does the save next what we want to do first of all is require mongoose next we will require express and then we will define app so we'll do const app equals express at the end of the page we will do app dot listen and we will listen to port 3000 next we will make a get request so we'll listen to a get request and we can say app dot get and before we continue, let's go on our database. And I'm using the sample database Mongoose provides you when you create a database. So whenever you try to create a database, it asks you if you want a sample database. Now, if you want to follow along with me, make sure you click to download the sample database, which Mongoose provides you. And by the way, I have made a tutorial on MongoDB, so you can click up here or up here and you can follow first those steps so you learn the basics and then you can follow along with me. So first of all, we have a sample underscore Airbnb database and then the collection with the listings and reviews basically has multiple listings. An example that we would like to do is we would like to have an API where a user can send us the number of the page. So I want page number five and he can also provide the limit. So I want 10 listings for every page. So basically how this works is like a blog. Whenever you go on a blog and there is multiple blogs, you go on page five or page six, or the same goes with Google results. So for example, a user can say, okay, give me the page five, and now I need for every page to get maximum of 10 listings. So on page five, we will give listings from number 40 or 41, to number 50 or 51, something like that. First thing we need to do is connect to our MongoDB. So to do that, we can say mongoose.connect, then we can pre provide our MongoDB URI. Here we will put our username, so my username is test, my password, and then we have to provide here our database name. Now our database has multiple databases, so we want to use this one right here, so we will say sample underscore Airbnb, so sample underscore Airbnb, there we go. And then also what we have to do is to create a schema. So to create a schema, what we can do is const, and then we can say const listings schema equals to, and then we can create a new schema. Here we will provide the details for our schema. So our schema has a name. So right here we have a name, an ID. Now we have to add all of those fields. So I'll add them right now. And there we go. So I defined everything on the schema that we want. And next, after that, what we will do is const and then listings equals to mongoose.model. We'll pass the schema as a second parameter. And here we want to pass the collection name. So it is listing and review. So let's do that. And there we go. And now here on the app.get, we will do das listings. And then next, we will specify the page number. So we can say, something like that. We can specify in our parameters the limit of the listings we will get each time. And next we will get request and result. So how this works is every time we put colon on the start of each parameter, then we can get that and this can be dynamic. So let me explain. So first of all, let me show you how we can get that. So we can say const and then we can destructure the parameters we get from the request and then we can get page and then the limit. And then this right here can be dynamic. So a user can send a get request and it can be something like that. So slash listings and then slash a random page. So we can say five. He can also give us the limit, so it will be 10. 
So here we don't say page, we just give an actual value. So in our case, it will be five. Now I want page and limit to be a number. So what I'll do is I'll say cons page like that, put it in parse int. This is how we can make this string to a number. So we get the page and it's the same thing we will do for the limit and yeah, there we go. So let's test it out first of all. So we will say console.log and do something like that to make sure everything works. So yeah, let's test it out. So first of all, let's open our terminal and let's run node index.js. Next, we will go in our browser and go to this port. So we will say HTTP, then localhost 3000. And then we will say does listen and then provide the page number. So for example, let's say five and then a limit, let's say 10. Now we will not get anything in return, but if we go on our console, we can see that we actually got the page number and also we got the limit. So now let's do another test to make sure our model and mongoose actually works. So what we can say is listen, and then we can say find one just to make sure it works. And then we will return that. So we can say if there is an error, give us the error in console. Otherwise, send the listing. Or it's actually just one listing. So let's rerun our application, our API, and go back to the browser and refresh the page. And we don't get anything. Let me see why. So, so first of all, let's console the log listing and see what we get. So we get now. Okay, so I managed to fix the issue. So the issue was on mongoose.module. Here we also have to specify the collection name at the end as well. So there we go. So now if we go on console, as you can see, we do get the listings. And let's replace that again with rest.send. So you can send that on the website or actually on the page. And yeah, there we go. So here we get all the information. So yeah, let's continue. So let me remove that now and let's actually implement the pagination. So we can say listings and then we can say dot find and I'll leave the filter as it is right now. Next, we can say dot skip. So what skip does, it skips X amount of documents and the X amount is page multiplied by the limit. So if the limit is 10 and we are asking for the page five, we will skip 50 documents and then get everything else. Then we want to limit that. So we get the next 10. So after we skip 50 documents, and that's for our example, if we have five pages with a limit of 10, then when we skip 10 documents, we only want to get the next 10 document. After we do that, we will just execute our script. We will check if there is an error, if there is not, we will just send the listings. And yeah, let's test it out. So let me rerun our script. And here I'll go and I'll say, okay, I want page number one with a limit of 10. Now you will not understand if it works by just seeing that. Now, a way to make it easier, I'll click, right click and then inspect. I'll go to the network tab, I'll refresh. Then I'll go here and I'll go to preview. And now you see we get a next amount of IDs. And now whenever I go to page two, for example, we will get the next two documents. So as you'll see, they will not be the same. So I'll just grab the ID, then go to page two. And if I search for, ID, for that ID, of course it doesn't exist. So as you saw, we get the next 10. Now let's see some other useful example. So we can say dot find, and here we can pass some filters. So we can say, we only want to get the ones, for example, that have for amenities a TV. So let's do that. So we can go on amenities and we can say in, in, in amenities, we want to have the TV. So that's how you can filter some documents. Now, usually whenever you have a website, you might want to show the full amount of the results. So let's see how we can do that. What we can say is listings, and then we can count the documents. Now here, make sure you have the same filter as up here. And here we can then execute our script. And if there is an error, we'll just console it. So, and then we will return and instead of returning listings, first of all, we will return listings within an object. And also we want to pass the total amount. Now that might be useful in some cases, but yeah, let's test it out. So let's run our script and let's refresh our page. And if we go on the bottom of the page, 
if you see down here we have a total of 4280 documents that match our filter so again that might be useful if you have something for example like google so if you have a search engine then you want to show the total amount of documents in that case if you actually have a search engine you probably have multiple of millions of results and now this script takes a lot of time to calculate all of those results right because if you have millions it will take a lot of time to calculate them now there is another function that you can pass and it's called estimated document count and this is a lot faster so make sure you use that and this is pretty accurate as well it just doesn't recount them. it counts them for example every minute or something like that and it saves them in cache or in the database so yeah that's it for this video let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next also hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos and also share this video with your friends so they can also learn how to make an api with mongoose also make sure to join our new discord server where i'm trying to build a community so we can help each other so yeah with that said see you in the next video